No, <laughs> Microsoft's like looking to do like a mobile operating system, you know, like for the Asus ROG and shit like that, like a gaming edition of Windows mm. comes with Denuvo baked in. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. And then that is Jordan, that is Pedro, and together with you, Shut Realm Dynamic, helping us form, you know him, you love him, Cocaine Voltron. Gentlemen, I just stubbed my toe very hard. Yeah, um, that, 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 that'll happen. Are, 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 your, are, your toenails, yeah. are your toenails trimmed? I have that problem where I'll just forget to trim my toenails, and I'll ram the nail right into something, and it'll break. Well, you see what happened is I, I forgot to get this. So I just ran through. Mm. It's our <laughs> IBM. I, I have, I have a sudden big urge to. I have a sudden urge to buy a REL subscription. I don't, Dude, I don't know why. Dude, uh, feel it. Let, let, let the red flow through. The uh, so remember I was talking about I rearranged my living room. Mm. You don't want to go didn't... tearing through a dark living room that you just rearranged like three hours ago. Yeah, you don't have that layout internalized yet. <laughs> not, not even a bit, man. The, I stayed on my feet and I called that a fucking victory. Is what I did. That was uh yeah, my foot hurts. I thought my day, my power was out when I got home. That's always like the great feel when you open the door and you're like it's warmer in here than everywhere else. But then I had a power line going across my back deck, left it alone, they got around it. A lot of people were without power from like Thursday and they still don't have power, so I'm not complaining. That was the excitement for this week, man. It just saved it right there for the end. How about you, Jordan? Anything uh the, the the exciting thing is I ordered a book like two months ago. And oh, hell yeah. It, fi it finally printed on demand, so I got my copy of a book that came out in 1981 that they stopped printing. What is now it? Now I have it. It's the Traveler book. Once upon a time, the cover had a, a spiffy man with like a fancy mustache, but now it's just a, just a plain plain copy of uh, 1970 Traveler by, or 1981 Traveler by uh, Mark Miller. Are you feeling a little let down that you didn't get like a, oh, did it advertise itself? As no, it, that? It, it, it didn't have it. Like the, 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 the original cover had Mustache Man, had Sci-Fi Mustache Man, and I, I, I need my Sci-Fi Mustache Man. Do you think if you get, I need to go on a spaceship mustache ride. Ordered the book for PlayStation 5 or what it came with it? No, no. But then it would have arrived in September. <laughs> would have arrived three days early in September, but it's still in September. Mm, Pedro Mateus, the man who has bought new car accessories. Um. Well, I I bought. Yeah, some you have. Clips. I just know you have, man. <laughs> I bought the clips to hold the uh, the floor mats in place because that's the sports trim of the um, 2011 revision of the Mazda 2. And it comes with the little uh, plastic stalks for you to attach um, the car mats to so they don't slip around. And the mats that we had bought didn't have the holes. So I actually went on eBay. It's like, did they sell just the clips so that we could cut the holes into uh, the mats ourselves and just attach them? It's like, oh, they do. Neat. <laughs> so I did. And Nori took his cap hole to the, um, the mats we bought. And yeah, it looks, it looks like it was made for it. It, it, we did a good job. <laughs> I'm just imagine like string everywhere. And I was like, yeah, it looks factory. Yeah. There's, no, there's, no, like, I, I there's like a glitter, picture glitter and like Discord. El Elmer's glue everywhere. <laughs> Some tape. <laughs> yeah. Tape in the wrong place. Yeah. Oh man. It sounds like we're trying to describe the horse. I mean, there's no tape in the horse. It's all glue all the time. It's the steam. Speaking of glue, you zip ties. <laughs> no, you don't break out the zip ties unless, like, your shorts a permanent solution. Then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but, but yes. Speaking um, of glue, the things you don't want include one of which is uh, batteries, and the EU seems to agree with most people on that even if every hardware manufacturer seems to disagree. Valve, of course, with the Steam Deck, they decided to uh, glue the battery down, very, very um, <laughs> well glued. And starting in um, 2027, the new regulations will go into place, which will require, if Valve want to keep selling the deck, that they make changes to how the battery is attached. They can make glue, they need to make it replaceable. It needs to be easily replaced and um you know for the sake of the environment and the not wasting the stupid amounts of lithium that we are currently doing 
Uh, it basically or the, or the other it, rare earths that just get, yeah like, all the other ones that are like also used to build it. Right. It is yeah. It it's a good. It, it's just a good thing. And yes, they should absolutely do it. I've taken apart tons of laptops, and even the Apple ones that I've taken apart, they don't have glue on the battery. They may have glue everywhere else, but the battery is usually just held in place by one or two screws and like a lip. So yeah, if Apple can do it, Valve, so can you. I got I got faith in you. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, and like, I, I'm I'm also a big fan of the, having uh, swappable batteries. I think that was like one of, one of the unacceptable casualties of, uh, of of devices getting like thinner and smaller all the time. Is yeah, just like have, having like these like really embedded batteries because like I was alluding to before, battery goes in a device. It's really really challenging to replace it. You're more likely to just throw out that like perfectly good computer and replace it with a new one, which just generates a ton, lot more e waste. Uh, hopefully, though, we'll start seeing some innovation on like swappable batteries because I think like, well, well like we're, the old like Nokia or BlackBerry batteries that may not mm-hmm. they might, that may not work in like this day and age, especially with like the size of batteries. But like, I, I, I don't know. There are, there are talented engineers who can solve this problem, right? I mean, it's if funny the that Switch you bring has that the up. clicky things, why not have clicky batteries as well? <laughs> when you bring that up, because we were told this is something we've been asking for in like laptops since forever, right? We want like easily upgradable, replaceable laptop parts and stuff like that. HP came back to us. Apple's come back to us. Dell's come back to us. Like, no, nah, man, we got to glue everything down. It's it, it would be impossible to make a laptop that was like nice and sleek and reasonably priced. That was user serviceable. It's a damn shame that never took place, right? No, no yeah. In, no, it does, doesn't exist at all. No, yeah. no, no. Thank you, Framework, for coming out and just dunking all over everyone. On your first one out of the gate, too. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. We, we, we can do this. This is completely possible. They're just full of they, shit. They uh, kind of knocked it out of the park, yeah. too. Right? Like, and they got their Gen 2 coming out, but those are like, it's like Q1 of next year already. Like, oh, okay. Uh, so there goes anybody who's going to be saying bigger, heavier, more expensive. Is it like if you get to use a bunch of screws and place it? Here's one thing glue's good with, especially with like a handheld device. I understand the logic behind it, it keeps shit stuck. And one thing you do not want any chance of jostling around, especially when you're liable for that, is going to be a battery. And the Steam Deck was a bit excessive with the glue, but not completely unworkable. Getting it screwed in, you know what? Let's just switch it to double A's. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> We, yeah, we, we need like old school AA's to get yeah, the 40 uh, get, get style or yeah. just like have, have D cell batteries. I want to be able to measure <laughs> that runtime in minutes. It'll be dope. <laughs> and something we were talking about before, uh, right in the pre show, could this possibly like bleed over to um, controllers? I, I want, as much as I enjoy the engineering in the PlayStation 4 controller, dude. I love being able to just pop the batteries out of the back of the Xbox controller. How many yeah. other, what I'm getting is how many other devices do you think we'll see this, you know, knock on effects for? Ah, uh, well, like, de- like v- VR, VR headsets for me seem like the big one as well, right? Like, yes, because they are effectively Android phones, so they should. <laughs> will we ever get back to the day where you just pop off the back, pop off the battery? I hope so. I, I, I hope I hope we get to a point of that. Or if we get like some new battery format where you can like slide it in or some shit. Like I I, I don't know. Like like, like I batteries said, that's we get a format have. where we get it like slide it in like two or three times. So you gotta you gotta blow on it and then yeah. you stick it in. You know, like work it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> get it pop in. Yeah. You, so, so, sometimes you gotta lube it a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's you know, a little bit too much friction. friction. Right. Yeah. yeah. I it's completely understandable. So, just like a little foreplay for your device. Oh, I, I want to see what Nintendo comes up with and what type of dick something, move. Something friction burns. Because I just have to imagine, like, whatever next... You, okay, is it safe to say there's a 100% chance that Nintendo's next-gen console is also going to be a handheld, right? Uh, it's, it, it definitely seems likely. The, the the Switch was, like, very, very successful, and it's a, like, it has a lot of, like, the social gaming stuff as well as, like, Hey, like, the, the, like, the, like, honestly, the whole like dual controller pop off thing mm-hmm. for like mini games mm-hmm. that was kind of genius, right? Like, it's a cool you, idea, right? Yeah, you you, you can, have player you can, like, one and up, player two, right there, <laughs> and anywhere. So, like, yeah, N- Nintendo has been always been pretty ambitious about like form factor, 
And I, and I think I, I, w- I would hope that if they're going to do a Switch 2, that A, they pick some beefier hardware, and then B, that, I don't know, B, replaceable B less batteries, man, re- Easily replaceable batteries, because we're in a little bit of a bubble pool, because when we think about, like, oh, do I want to replace, we have that thought of, like, yeah, I can get a spot jar, we can crack this thing open, we can get the battery out. That's not reality for 99% of people, and they're like, oh, look, it's turned into a spicy pillow. Time to throw it oh, away. Yeah. And, and I mean, mm-hmm. like, to, to, to like, the, the credit of the resources out there, stuff like iFixit, where they, like, give you, like, the step-by-step picture instructions and will sell you, like, the toolkit on on the page to be like, mm-hmm. here's everything you need to, like, replace the, uh, replace, like, the, the joystick in the Joy-Con or whatever, right? Like, And I don't want to like, dunk on Steam too hard for this because they did really good as far as repairability for the Steam Deck. Yeah, like, it, uh, they, 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 it could have been a lot worse than it was. Right, Absolutely. yes. Mm. It, it was just the unfortunate thing instead of having like three extra like plastic pillars to screw the battery onto no let's just fill it up with some fucking glue mm. yeah because someone was munching on their munching on some glue at <laughs> right? valve and they're like oh i got some extra i got some i got too much glue on my steam deck prototype wait a minute delicious mm. i have a tasty idea yeah they were going to use a weaker glue initially but dude ate it all no true mm-hmm. story it was uh, delicious. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, it, 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 you, you, fish glue. Fish glue yep. exists. So, mm. for, for for glue and fish to uh, for fish to that, make that, a super fish. <laughs> Man, I right, caught one transition of the day. Day. Snow Spe- horse speaking, in it. <laughs> speaking of Steam decks, uh, there's a new Steam client beta update. Uh, if you've been following the beta like me, you've been basking in the new UI glory, but they've been they've had some issues that have been reintroduced over time. Uh, one new feature, though, that they've added is there's an option now to add uh, Steam Deck compatibility to the store page. So if you're browsing through the uh, store while you're on your desktop client and you're looking for games to put on your Steam Deck, it is it saves you installing like a plugin or cross-referencing SteamDB or whatever, which I think is a nice thing. I think it probably should have been pushed out a little earlier, but you know, here here it is. Um, they also have they also added a built-in timer to the Steam overlay, which again, I'm really liking the whole like adding a notepad, adding a timer. If it doesn't like as long as they're not like adding too much shit, like bogging the game down, like having handy utilities like that is is really nice, right? Like, especially if you're doing like speed runs or if you're like I don't know. There's there's a lot of things where you would let, want to know like the timing on something in a game. Yeah, right? I mean, like, yes. like I, there's <laughs> plenty of room for like a horoscope and a weather widget. That'd be pretty. Cr- crossword. That's the thing. Yeah, like, if it's not Sudoku. all being loaded at once, by all means, put a bunch of functionality in there. Just yeah, let people turn it off, like proper off, so that it's not consuming resources that the game needs. Yeah, <laughs> uh, especially because like th- you do need overlay for Steam input to work. Uh, yes. the, the other, they, uh, they fixed the bug under Linux now where, uh, if you're using a controller, uh, your inputs will now be set with the proper priority, which is always good. Hey. Uh, yeah. So that, <laughs> that's casually nice. lower latency and yeah, the, and uh, XDG portal, they, uh, uh, you may know XDG portal as that thing that was introduced first for what I we know now that know thing. Pedro Mateus is the thing that pops up was an error on Chrome and it's like, get wrecked nerd. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it is. It was originally introduced for what we now know as flat packs, and it was basically how the flat packs got the l- the little dialogue window that appears whenever you're on Discord and you want to attach a picture on PC. That thing that shows up if you're on a Wayland session. That's being brought up by the XDG desktop portal for GNOME or for KDE or whatever the case may be. But why would you need and- Wayland? It's not like the Steam Deck uses Wayland, Pedro. Precisely. <laughs> but right, it was working fine on Wayland because Wayland makes ha- active use of uh, XDG Desktop Portal. But for people on XFCE, for example, uh, who didn't, uh, and if you were trying to, say, upload a screenshot or do something that required a file dialog to pop up, you just weren't getting it. Mm. That's been fixed now, too. <laughs> Yay. And maybe you were a fan you know we got everybody's got a new ui now it's it's rolled out it, it's omnipresent there's no nothing but to just accept your fate but there was a little switch if you'd went looking for it and you're like oh look there's a nice little switch right here i can go back to the old ui that's gone now i mean it, it's still there it just doesn't do anything so this is your new forever interface get used to it well i mean it's not like it's going to change for another like what 15 years valve is pretty no, this is the new valve eight years <laughs> Mm, yeah, okay, yes. Okay. Mm. 
So, yeah, a, a, Debbie, a, a Debbie and stable life cycle about. Oh, it's going to be green again. Ladies and gentlemen, we got some exciting news. Overwatch 2 is coming to Steam August 10th. That's right, Blizzard Entertainment, everyone's favorite company as of late. Uh, probably not true what I just said. However, however, another one has bent the knee. And they're going to release the Blizzard title, the much beloved <laughs> Overwatch 2, because that's the one they picked to sell it to us, lads. Uh, so it'll be available on August 10th. And they say, it's our goal at Blizzard to listen to players and try to exceed their expectations in everything we do, especially like killing off the uh, whole thing the, that the, they were... The, 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 the co-op gameplay that they were yeah. really promising mm-hmm. and, that, and that single yeah, player the stuff. The that... PvE, oh no, that are actually doing the PvE after everyone gave them a load of shit over it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, after it was like, oh wait, you're, you're, you're not doing the whole thing you needed to make a new game for? Well then, why mm-hmm. did we buy this new game? Oh. There it is. Oh, it almost as if it was a publicity stunt to direct attention away from other things that were happening <laughs> yeah, in Activision. Yeah, p- p- pick something, right? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like, and and I wonder how much this has to do with like the Microsoft merger with like Activision Blizzard going like, Hey, see, look at, look at all our games available on all our platforms. It's we're, we're not anti-competitive or anything. Uh, it's, it's, did, did anyone think Blizzard would have, have was, okay, what's next? World of Warcraft? <laughs> like, on, honestly, Probably maybe, Diablo like, 4 before World of Warcraft. <laughs> I think this kind of makes sense because it's a free to play game. They're like, we're not losing anything. We're just going to hopefully regain two or three people playing. Yeah, I I mean, there there is definitely a uh, a large contingent of people who, myself included, are like, I don't want to install another client to download a fucking game. There's too many of them. Mm. So so just having having it all like co located on Steam is is nice, right? Not having to manage, and especially for like crossplay stuff, if they can get like the the battle net to uh, Steam Play stuff integrated, like mm-hmm. oh, th- no. th- th- that's the that's the kind of stuff I'm looking forward to is like actual like actual crossplay, actual interactivity between yeah. the the, uh, the different platforms. Yes. <laughs> Have either of you played Overwatch or Overwatch Two? No, me either. <laughs> Uh, all I know it. about Overwatch 2 is that at one point, I don't know if this is still the case, but at one point you needed to have a valid phone number and you couldn't um, use like Google uh, phone Google numbers Bruce. or mm-hmm. any, yeah, like online VoIP service phone Sounds numbers. Sounds like a free to play game, actual, doesn't it? Yeah, an actual phone number that you had to register to your account. <laughs> Why are you against like anti spammer and bot? Protection, Pedro. Do you have a bot firm? We don't know. This is how you get TF2. That's the thing. It's um, it's already Activision, and on top of that, they want my phone number. No, no, they don't want your phone number. Bobby just wants your digits. He wants he wants to call you and allegedly threaten to murder you. Yes, Bobby Kotick wants my phone number so he can send a hitman after me. The allegedly uh the um i got too much uh, shit going on in life i don't know about all this i'm just like all right uh yeah no that's one of the things that came out from the investigation that blizzard and activision are currently under but yeah no if they put hearthstone on steam that would be the one game that i'd go okay maybe i'll create another um battle net account but even then i probably wouldn't so (laughs) I, I, i want the steam port of starcraft 64 that's 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 what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, all right, I can see that. Yeah, and you they, could play they, they, it they with like the latest version of on, on on Steam. Yeah, so mm. version of Proton, which is yeah. out Proton eight seven. Not much to say about this, but FSR is back. It's back. Ooh. I didn't even know it was missing. I'm like, Where, where'd you go, man? Where'd you go? Apparently, it was just broken. And uh, you know, a couple of fixes, Proton fixes. They added support for Neptunia. Neptunia? Neptunia. 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 That sounds like Three some semicolon Morty. semicolon birth. Right. Like that one it's, end. It's two. an anime game, if you couldn't tell. You know what? You could just throw that at the end and be like, sure, why not? Thanks, and- thanks, Niyashima Pedro, which is a different Pedro. <laughs> Nishiyama Pedro? No, not me. Yeah, Nishiyama Pedro? Yeah. And uh, we got version bumps for VKD3D, DXVK, and NVAPI. And uh, yeah. Uh, but I, 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 you got a good point there. 
Yeah, it, it's it's nice to have because like uh, a lot a lot of people were using Proton 7s FSR because like GameScope wasn't widely available. It was busted on Nvidia for the longest time. Now that now that GameScope is like available and just kind of works everywhere, uh, it kind of diminishes the need for FSR in Proton. But there are some game folks that just don't want to install GameScope. Don't want to mess with that. And there are straight up just some games that don't scope. So this is always a nice thing to have if you want some FSR. And there are games that actually need, um, <laughs> nowadays I'd make the argument there are games that actually need, uh, game scope. No, the fuck there's not, Pedro. I just got my 4060 Ti, uh, 16 gig and it's like, I, I can crush Yeah, some, you know those three P. screens that you have running off of that GPU? Yeah, I'm going to shut down all of them and then have your biggest one scale down to 640 by 480 because I, I'm using I, SDL 1.2. <laughs> I, I <laughs> that, look at that, Those are the games that game scope is... A necessity for <laughs> I, I, I look at those prices for that 4070 and I'm just I just cry because I'm like fuck I'm gonna you mean the 4070 Ti right for yeah the 4070 Ti ah I'm yes like, the, the um, 4080 that wasn't the 12 gig version yeah, <laughs> yeah like what's the, what's the one I can fucking afford man like shit <laughs> So, yeah, no, the, to be fair, I just realized that's the one thing we forgot. There is a new version of proper proton not just G uh, yes oh, they did a, they, they bumped eight. three yeah, yeah it, it it brings all the fixes from experimental it broke, into uh, track mania 2020 again. Mm -hmm. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, just those are the games that you just go back and you go uh Proton 7 there. Done. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, mm, mm, <laughs> are there are there are there games these days that still require like Proton 5 or 3 or is like 7 kind I of I think a lot of games right now are still very much in the uh like you know what? It's still working. Mhm. Mm yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there uh Harat the uh, boomer shooter that one works really well with proton four mm. and all the newer protons have severe performance issues with that so mm. <laughs> there's that mm. one and that's the game that came out this year <laughs> pretty decent uh so we got a couple of new games this week yes you spin me right round baby right round is rotoforce a game where it wants well, it's to shoot them up where you move the level instead of moving around uh, and you're, 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 you're a snail, you're in a box, you shoot other things, uh, and you, and you move around. Uh, they do have a, uh, they do have like a regular mode where like the sta screen stays put and the, the, <laughs> just the, the, the slug moves. Oh, but, and like, you gotta run around the monitor. Yeah. And you gotta run around the monitor if like, that's a little too advanced for your brain. Uh, but the, the other thing they say is only four colors at a time. This is their aesthetic choice and they're sticking to it. Uh, that's, that, that's the rules. It's 10% off right now. So it's like what, uh, 11 bucks us shit. Break out your CGA monitors. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got a bit of like super hexagon vibes from it a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, no, this is, uh, a pur se muove or, uh, and yet Bless it moves, you. but in with, you know, shmup mechanics, uh, it, it, it's how far can you crane your neck the game, uh -huh. but they at least have the option to lock the screen in place and you, yeah, the slug moves, <laughs> but the level stays put. So yeah, that's, that's nice. <laughs> I kind of, I don't know. To me, that kind of ruins the fun. I understand why they put that in there. Cause like people would freak the fuck out. Like, why don't you have this? But like, but also come on. I want to give him props, man, for, uh, OS is like Ubuntu, Ubuntu 14 or similar. So what are some similar, uh, like era of Ubuntu 14? When was Ubuntu 14 Ooh, released? What year? Um, 2014 right like that's the 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 the, yes. the the number code is the is the mm -hmm. so 2014 would have been it like would have been fedora, linux mint uh 13, <laughs> maybe maybe fedora fifth not not maybe fedora 15 is a little too new for that uh, mm. April no, 17. fedora uh 16 17 5, 2015 was fedora 17 mm. okay i think okay 1404 ld <laughs> I, no, no one's going to take you up on that challenge. We'll run yeah, something newer yeah. on that. No, it's 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 not running on like Slackware too, man. What what the fuck? This game is crap. Ladies and gentlemen, for something that is for better or for worse, we're probably going to try this uh, out in the after show. Is our next game, which why not? Why not's all I'm going to say is when I <laughs> saw this show up. We're you talking about Fork Lift Racer. Fork lift. It's already got mixed reviews. It's early access, it's free, so it's realistic handling online multiplayer offers you an experience like no other. You can customize your forklift and play with friends and race to a finish line. All factually true once you get up and running. And hey, you know what? They finally, somebody took the best part of Shenmue 
and mm, put it on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at this. Yeah. This is very accurate. OSHA, don't give a damn. Forklift <laughs> spitting. Do they, do, do they have forklift jousting? That's what that's what I want to know. Forklift off to ramp. Well, how high? Oh, and you get turbo powered. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah turbo. So I, I saw this and I'm like, didn't we talk about this before? This is not to be confused with fork drift, which is mm-hmm. for drifting your forklifts. This is this is simply for racing them. Yeah, yeah. This looks a lot like uh, pocket cars, which was the RC uh, car game that we were trying to <laughs> find in the um, pre pre show. Uh, it's, uh, it looks a lot, it, it, it's got that, um, generic racing game that you can probably buy the assets from in one of the oh, stores. Pedro, oh, yeah, wait until you actually UE launch buy, this. Right? Like, Let me just go ahead and make this very clear. These, uh, the screenshots are choice. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, well, once you launch the game, you're like, this looks nothing like pocket cards. <laughs> So it, Good it, 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 all right, okay. It, look, it looks like it's like UE4, UE5. That's the, that about right? It, it 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 feels like oh man. Speaking of like Unreal Engine, I might even stream some of this Monday. Uh, the it, if you were a patron backer, the un, uh, Deco Tree for Link. Ah, the uh, ship of Harkanian or whatever. Yeah, it, somebody remade the Deco. Deco is it Deco? Ah, Deku. De- Deku. Yes. Deku Tree and Unreal Engine Five. That entire level. And previously, it was only available if you were backing this project. I didn't even know about it, but now it's publicly available. I downloaded it, played it. It's amazing, man. I had a great time with that. Yeah, I saw, both I saw, of these I saw, people. I saw you were posting about that. Link apparently. Like, come I, on, man. I was never much of a Zelda fan, to be fair. <laughs> Ocarina of Time was the game that came with my N sixty four, so I, I played a bunch of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I'd never had the Nintendo console until I bought the uh, the Game Boy Color. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, I might I might even stream some of that on Monday. I don't know. We'll find out. So, hey, listen, Battle Bit, Battle Bit remastered. Yes, uh, it's the hot new sensation. Everyone's playing it on Steam. It's uh, the big game. It's effectively Battlefield, but with voxely graphics. And it's yeah, a lot of people like it. Go figure. Uh, and yeah, the developers are saying that they are going to be introducing a, um, a version of a anti-cheat software that I hadn't heard of until now, uh, which is called, um, face it and face it, basically Tiger, you hit the jackpot. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, didn't have a Linux version. So, uh, they, uh, are very well aware of what a steam deck is and they would very much like people who are playing the game on the steam deck to be able to continue to do so. So good on them. Very good. So I started looking into, uh, face it and, uh, apparently it was created as an MLG, uh, ESL master league gaming esports league, a uh, sanctioned anti-cheat. This was, uh, introduced at the height of the CSGO, uh, esports cheating scandals in 2016. Uh, the regular version is exactly the slimy, draconian, ultimately useless and redundant kind of anti-cheat that makes me want to shout, why? Um, it's, uh, they describe it as an application like that runs... a bunch run- of extra words for effective. <laughs> um, an, an application that runs while you're playing one of our protected games, like CSGO, so Punk Buster. Uh, a kernel module driver that's loaded at boot, ring zero. And uh, server-side SDK that ensures communication between the client and server happens in a trusted and secure manager. Ooh, they're they're re-implementing SSL on their anti-cheat. Uh, obey citizen. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, supposedly the Linux version is going to be tamer, so they claim. So we'll we'll see. You put, the, you put this exact same system in some bullshit dark. Souls game that you want to play, and be like, ah, oh, you know what? You know, you got to make uh, sacrifices. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, no, <laughs> I'm the one who's uh, deleted his Blizzard account. I'm the one who's deleted his uh, Epic account. I'm the one who's very much stood for what I believe in. <laughs> but you just got pissed off in both of those occasions. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so, so here's the thing. It's nice that the battle bit folks are like waiting for the for Linux to be implemented in in the their anti cheat before cutting over. They could have very well just been like, "Hey, we're cutting over to the new thing. Too fucking bad. We'll push out an update when you Linux users are grovel enough, right?" Like. Um, well, I so, think this is like a, got a lot more to do with the Steam Deck and being able to read the room. Like, you know what? Oh, we yeah. like money. Oh, no, but but <laughs> but I mean, like that that that's the thing that the Steam Deck is like forcing developers to like make make that call. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
One one thing we were, we were talking about TPM before uh, in the pre pre super shows, and one thing is that um, like Face It on Windows pretty extensively uses TPM 2.0, and I wonder if their Linux user Linux um, version is going to be leveraging it as well because it is fully supported in the kernel, and Wine can expose those APIs. I mean, so do you get TPM implemented in the Steam Deck, right? Yes, it, it 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 is on the Steam Deck. So yeah, it's it, it's very it, possible. it runs Windows 11. So yes, it does. <laughs> Run. Which is like we, we don't we don't have a lot of stuff that's like <laughs> really using yeah. we don't have a lot of stuff using TPM on Linux like as it is right like you have to go out of your way to use it say if you have like full drive encryption you can have yeah, your it, TPM chip decrypt it as you turn on like it does if you're using BitLocker in Windows mm. yeah. so but you have to go out of your way to do it distros mm. still don't offer a way to just yeah so set that so, up and install so, which they should. <laughs> which, which, well, I mean, like, uh, like ha- having having a cryptographic pro- coprocessor is like, yeah, it's it's the black box that handles all this stuff. Can we call but it a crypto are, bro? A, a crypto pro, yeah. <laughs> no, but bro, like, bro. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's crypto bro. Yeah, that's, that's, little, little, yeah, it sounds better than little, TPM. Uh, crypto buddy, little, little little purple monkey that lives on your little your computer. Uh, but like, is is this going to be the first step of seeing like more more uh, software using it? And like, what, what, what does that mean for the, for open source software? Right? Like, cause it is, it is a black box. That is, that is yeah. kind of the point of, uh, that is kind of the point in TPM. So, well, you gotta well, give them a little bit of credit. At least they looked at like easy anti-cheat and they're like, that's wholly ineffective. It's too easy. Yeah. <laughs> we, just, we just gotta in, in, install and in, in, click a box and enable, enable a library. Like. I, I i i still i still don't like um people or game developers forcing the onus of anti-cheat onto literally everyone who's not cheating because the cheaters are going to find a way around it so the only people that this is going to affect are going to be the legitimate players who get unduly banned which well, has I mean, happened which keeps happening you, you gotta think about the small independent crack producer Pedro, mm-hmm. like this is going to yeah. help increase the value of their hacks. <laughs> it, 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 ah, it, it doesn't sit well with me. Like anti-cheat in general just does not sit well with me. <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, we, we, got, we got more to say on that later on. Actually, it's about time to uh, uh, head on. next. Yeah, we got the new, news. New, new, news. So, you know what uh, that is? Better didn't take quite as much time. <laughs> yeah so let's let's talk let's talk about uh dolphins and other mammals of the sea what happened to dolphin basically what we said happened next right now um, <laughs> what happened what actually basically what we said next door no um if you don't know so dolphin was all lined up and was like hey we're gonna be on steam too whichever one went like okay. give me some popcorn all right get the chair yeah. let's see how this fucking goes um, go, go on uh uh-huh. and uh Steam came back and just kind of passed on some information like, no, we, we can't really have you on Steam. And, you know, the Internet did what the Internet did, got its shit wrong. And, you know, they were like, no, they, a lot of people believed that uh, Nintendo rightfully would believe that Nintendo filed like a DMCA against them. That didn't happen. Steam went to Nintendo and they were like, hey, we're business partners. You know, we got Portal on the Switch and, you know, whatever, how this is going to work out. We're thinking about letting Dolphin, the Wii emulator, on the store. Are you cool with that? And then, you know, Nintendo pauses punching a kitten and looks at them and goes, no, not really. And, you know, we are uh, got that reputation for, like, just going after motherfuckers, frivolous lawsuits, abusing the DMCA, and uh, we, we can't help it. We're like a great white. This is what's going to happen if you let this on. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more, right? And that's basically what went down. Valve came back to the Dolphin EMU. And they said, if you can get Nintendo's approval to be on the Steam store, then you can be on the Steam store. Which is a very diplomatic way of saying, nope. (laughs) Nope. Yeah. And like the the, the blog post also like details because they got they did get legal counsel before before they before they made this. Uh, they they did uh, employ the uh, the services of voyeur law and them and their lawyers seem to indicate that um, ev- even though they are uh, shipping the we common key uh, that uh, because uh, circum- uh, decryption circumvention is a very, very small portion of what Dolphin actually does there. They, they feel that like if this actually went to court, 
uh, they can easily persuade a judge that like, hey, we're, we're, we're not like trying to encourage piracy. We're not trying to encourage like circumvention. You can use this to run, uh, you can use this to run home, homebrew software. Well, that was like the internet solution, right? Like just remove the encryption key and everything's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, well, they 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 uh, looked into that as well, and they said that that would provide like additional problems as well in terms of like an actual an actual implementation. But yeah, so the so the 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 moral of the story seems to be Dolphin is in a legally okay spot, but Valve isn't just, just is not going to do business with them, and I don't think anyone will with Big Daddy Nintendo with mm -hmm. their giant like yeah, Mario Donkey yeah. Kong hammer waiting to just smack whoever tries. And yeah, be that as it may, that Dolphin might not uh, be designed to break encryption, so it doesn't necessarily run afoul of the um, it, it, yeah, that it, particular it, it, clause it, it of the DMCA the encryption. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, this it, is just Valve. Like, does, we don't want this headache. Or, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it is. Uh, I too wouldn't want to fight valve as if i was in their position just okay so if I, I would have to fight valve in order to get this on their store it does it it's a lose-lose situation no matter how you look at it so mm, yeah no <laughs> dude no, um, no, no one's gonna be taking your dolphin away from you though unfortunately yeah, the only available to, in all the, yeah. other, all the other places the, the only way to play video games under linux is through steam though right yeah it's, that, that, that's what that guy at SeaWorld told me okay to be fair, that's where most of them are. Yes. Mm. It would have been really <laughs> cool, though, if we could have had nice things. Thank you, Nintendo, for making sure that we didn't get that in this particular case. Give, and Nintendo's like, give us all the money. <sighs> yeah, for uh, give us all the money for a fraction of the library that you used to have and can't play anymore because your console is now dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, the eShop e is dead. There are mm -hmm. just yeah. no ways to get those games anymore. Thanks, Gerard. <laughs> yeah, big, big big thank you for like buying yeah, literally seriously, all the games. Piracy is the only way that you're going to play um, Wii games and Wii U games in the very short future. Now, have you ever but, found what, a tutorial that just pissed you off? Yes. I, I, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> My so, all-time so favorite many. game. <laughs> did it ask you for your phone number? <laughs> did it, no, did, no, did it, it didn't ask me for your home dirt. <laughs> didn't ask me for my phone uh, number but it managed to piss everyone who played it off Fallout 2 is the game that I'm mentioning and if you've played that game you remember the Temple of Trials and you remember that you wanted to just not do it so you created a save after the Temple of Trials which is what everyone did uh, but yeah no the Ars Technica actually has uh, an article discussing game tutorials and how they should be skippable which I fundamentally agree with just about everything that they say on the article. Uh, it is, the author was uh, sort of enlightened to it by finding a mod for Fallout 4, which is called Start Me Up, which gives you a few options. You can replay um, the tutorial if you'd like, uh, or you can just start at a fixed point during the start of the game itself after you're done with the mandatory tutorial. Fallout 4 is just uh, the most recent one, at least still Starfield comes out. Uh, Skyrim did the exact same thing. Oblivion did the exact same thing. Uh, Morrowind did too, but the tutorial in Morrowind was so tiny that most people kind of gave it a pass. They do bring up Elden Ring as an example of a good way to do it because it is entirely optional, the tutorial on that one. So uh, entirely optional, in fact, that a lot of people miss the drop that you need to make in order to get to the tutorial area. So there's, there's that, uh, You'll learn but yeah, one no, way I, or another. I very much agree. And this is why a lot of people resort to modding games. And that's, this is why I want uh, fallout Two CE to be able to work with the fallout Two restoration project, which gives you the option to skip the temple of trials. Please follow two CE yeah. people. You're awesome. Yeah, like Just do I, that. I'm, I'm getting some Pokemon Sun and Moon flashbacks. That mm -hmm. tutorial was literally like two hours long of unskippable cutscenes for fucking Pokemon. I like, dude. Like, I, I get that these games are for small children, but like, 
there's a way to convey your game mechanics that doesn't involve me sitting and listening to like two hours of cinematics. And mm-hmm. some games, they like, they bury choices and like important plot stuff in the tutorial too. So being able to like replace that with like a checklist or some option select dialogue, I think would, would be very nice, especially for, for games that like are members of established series that don't really change all that much or games that are encouraging you to replay them quite a bit. Like, Mass Effect or whatever, right? Like there, there's so many choices you can make in that game. You don't want to have to go through the freaking tutorial to learn how to like shoot again. You you played the mm-hmm. game already. No, it's part of the experience. No, it's, <laughs> it's how I intended for it to be played. Like, artistic what, 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 vision, you what, fucking what, troglodytes. What's going to break immersion more? Sk- being able to skip a tutorial or just being frustrated by the fact that you have to go through the tutorial in the first place, right? Artistic. <laughs> but my integrity as a artist. <laughs> have you ever like just quit a game because the tutorial was like pissing you off too much uh, i had this happen this week i downloaded um what was it called uh naraka that just recently went free to play and i'm like hey let's go find out whether or not this r- runs under linux it was free to play does run under linux but about 30 minutes into the tutorial, which here's something you got to keep in mind. Not everything should be skippable in this case. If you're playing a online free to play game or just an online, I want everybody else in that uh, arena or whatever passes for that world to at least have the basics down. Maybe it shouldn't take 30 minutes to get everything down, but they were really hammering the mechanics home on this. And I'm like, I'm finally done. It's like, no, now put them all to use. I'm like, I'm out. Alt F4. (laughs) <laughs> maybe i can come back to it but stuff like that um you get you got to strike that balance you know that that was just like too long for me to care but i want that system in place especially for a free-to-play game and usually it would yeah. take that long to hammer it out now i think strangely enough i'm going to give praise to the game that is the same game tm for like the last four games <laughs> assassin's creed modern assassin creed um shockingly good job because how many times have we joked like oh look oh only two and a half three hours then we got the title drop what's the game doing before the title drop that's the game saying all right your tutorial's over like we've taught you everything while you've been fucking around playing with stuff without you realizing it like you know how to play the game now we've determined if you can get to this part in the game you've got all the basic stuff you brought up online games, and yet, ironically, those uh, usually MMOs are the ones that do the best job with the tutorial because they know that people are going to create multiple characters. So well, I, they I mean, want to with reduce most MMOs, the friction. Like you just click on the thing, right? You click on the mouse and you wait. Yes, but uh, before I, I mean, you even get to combat, they uh, most MMOs actually give you the option. Do you want to skip the tutorial, or you just don't talk to the tutorial NPC, and you never even see it? Because so, they know that people have multiple characters, and they want to reduce that friction as much as possible. So, I, I, yeah. I, I, want, I want to bring something up, though. What <laughs> about <laughs> the ability to, to lo- jump into a tutorial at any point? Because one problem that I run into, and I know a lot of people do as well, is you're playing a game for a while, you get pretty far into it, mm-hmm. and you put it down for whatever reason, and then, you know, you get your free time back, and you're like, I'm gonna pick up where I left off. I oh, have no idea no. how to play this fucking game Every anymore. Every button on this controller does something, doesn't it? Oh, right. Shit. So, so like, like have, having, so, like, having a refresher, but, like, make, making that optional, being able to jump into that at any time, as opposed to, like, locking the front of the game to have that, like, I think some, something in that space is probably, like, the, the middle ground. We need to pass legislation X to skip uh, unless it's online. Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk no, actually cy- does cyberpunk. that. Cyberpunk. Yeah, it has the little chip, the tutorial chip that you can just slot in at any time and replay the tutorial. Yeah. I think that's a good way to do it. And, you know, like most of the times you get like a super sweet, quick to the point of like, do this, do this, do this, or have fun. And people are going to come down both ways on this particular topic. They're like, I want a little bit of hand holding. Oh, too much hand holding or not enough. You know, no one's ever going to be happy with this, but having a, just a general option to skip through tutorials or to what Jordan said, without having to create a new character, being able to go back and have a refresher course is always part of good game design and my not so humble opinion. You know, you know, you know, you know, it's not a good part of, of game design piracy, Jordan, evil, filthy Linux pirates. 
Oh yeah, the Yar. No, De Novo. You 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 know them. You you definitely don't love them. You loathe them even. <laughs> they're they're determined to prove that De Novo doesn't produce uh, performance for games, and they have gone so far. They 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 put out their own numbers. Everyone's like, yeah, right, buddy. Sure, we're, we're we you've investigated yourself and determined you've done nothing wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but now, so I've they're, always they're, wondered they're, what De Novo looked like. That right. <laughs> It's some it's some eyes wide shut shit. Rawr. Um but uh, uh but yeah, so now they're they're looking at getting uh, external third parties to run benchmarks uh for software to conclusively prove hey, Denuvo doesn't cause a performance impact. Uh which, you know, if that if that's true, that is very nice. Good on you, Denuvo, for like unfucking your DRM. It doesn't fix the other problems about DRM. Uh, the article mentions that there are several games available on Steam right now that have for over for almost over two years now are unplayable due to busted games to, with Windows Live integration. So there's there's stuff like uh, punishing act, uh, legitimate users, blocking people out from playing games that they legitimately own due to easily circumventable software issues. Yeah, dude, like just nuking, uh, like nuking performance on a game is like the one of the more minor crimes of DRM here. It's certainly an inconvenient one, but that's not that. That's I, I guess this is what people are mad about now. I, I suppose. Um, like when you think about it, I think the best thing for Denuvo is, uh, especially recently, that they've really hammered home the like this is now a hundred percent subscription service developers and we better get that check every single month or that shit's gone that's a real problem and by a problem i mean an awesome thing the best thing i can oh, say no, about this awful. is that it goes away and you know in this interview um which who, who was it ours when uh, they were talking pc gamer well we're on pc gamer but the actual source is oh, from yeah. ours technica yeah. thank you other than yeah. for reading that <laughs> um yeah, they're talking about performance loss, and they used words like a small amount, roughly 6.7. The fuck, since when is 6.7 a small amount when you're talking about performance? Like, that that could be like, hmm, maybe I'm buying this GPU or this CPU. Why? Because it's 6.7% faster. Like, that's more than a rounding error. Yeah, that that's a generational increase. That's Unless the difference you're between... Nvidia and you release a 4060. 57 and 62 FPS. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Um, has there like been a game recently that we can think of? If, I think fortunately, like Proton's always done a good job. Yeah, the, Doom, by Doom the time that Proton one. got to where it is, Denuvo was already a solved problem in Wine. So uh, we had the exact same issues that people had, which was when Denuvo, the servers went down for an entire weekend and people couldn't play literally every game that had Denuvo. That was a problem. Or when uh, they released a busted version that made it so if you had an Intel Alder Lake CPU, you couldn't play a Denuvo game at all. Uh, yeah, no, I'd, I'd very much like to see a one-to-one -one comparison on the exact same hardware, same software, with the only difference being whether or not Denuvo is baked in and running or not. Or, even better, I'd like to see that with the old versions, not the new versions that they probably most definitely have fixed the issue that was causing the performance issues, that they are very confident now won't happen anymore. We'll see about that. I got an idea. Uh, I could, you know how Microsoft's like looking to do like a mobile operating system, you know, like for the Asus ROG and shit like that, like a gaming edition of Windows? Mm. Comes with Denuvo baked in to the curve. How about that? Denuvo S? <laughs> yes. Home edition. <laughs> Because <laughs> fucking Microsoft to, uh, no, no, the, uh, st Starter Edition <laughs> can only run three programs at a time. Oh, yeah, oh well, like oh. Windows 7 Starter. Yeah. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Microsoft, call us. We're full of these ideas. They're brilliant. Yeah. We're, we're, we're evil geniuses. Absolutely. Uh, well, I guess we, we gotta we gotta talk building the city on rock and roll. One last thing before we get out of here, we always like to, if we catch a nice, interesting open source game, we want to throw it in front of all of you. And this is Egregoria. Yes, a 3D city builder with a twist. What's the twist? It doesn't have a grid. Like, that's the first thing. You say city builder. You're like, yep, let's draw those some city square checker marks and uh, lay some pipes, lay some power. No grid on this. Look at this. Still in early development, but I mean, it's looking good. Um, I want you to think like skylines, but with a more focus on simulation and less game and of course it's done in rust because it's 2023 and we got to do everything in rust i like it I, I like it mainly because of this 
every individual in this game, all, all of your uh, denizens, they have their own thought models built into them. Like, mm. they're going to get up to shit. Like, doesn't that, like, tickle some of your mad overlord, like, hmm, minions, let's see see what you can do. Yeah, the, the, the game says uh, on the Discord that, like, there's a real big focus on, like, logistics ed- element of city management. So, yeah, like, like, making sure that, like, things get adequately supplied and, and staffed and stuff. Cer- cer- certainly one way to do the uh, the city builder. Jordan has and got PBR shaders. For Pabst? Blue yeah. Ribbon? <laughs> oh, Probably Easy. not, but it is now. I, I don't know. I've never actually, I've never actually drank a Pabst. I have no idea. What you're not. Like. Every can taste different. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, At least the uh, the current version has some uh, graphical overhauls. Apparently, the uh, the previous versions, it, everything looked a bit flatter. They have the comparison on the, uh, the that's the new graphics, uh, and the uh, the previous ones are well, a, a lot less impressive. <laughs> I'm just but it's good. That. Hey man, I'm like Willy Wonka and like this is my candy factory. That's where the Oompa Loompas love. <laughs> on 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 the Rust FMT Tomol, apparently last year they updated to the 2021 edition in Clippy. So is there Clippy in this game? I don't know, man. It's, it's wow, it's frighteningly small, man. Uh, 20 26 mags if you want to download yeah. the app, uh, and it's got build instructions for Debian ish. Like, so, did you ever play the uh, City Builders? I played uh, Some City 2000 on a Mac, whatever the hell it was, in the uh, maybe early, super early 90s, because that is the computers we had, and that was the one game that they would let us yeah, play. Yeah, Sim, Sim City 3. That was the yeah. one I played the most. I think it was Sim City 2 for me. Reticulating <laughs> splines. Yeah. That na- okay, hang on, I take that back. Also, <laughs> we also played a game called Encarta. Because it was ah, a simpler time. I do had Encarta 95, yes. Yeah, the Encarta game. <laughs> Like <laughs> the search for motion video on the computer. Hey, hey the, we, were, we were desperate for any sort of like entertainment on the classroom computers, man. You know, in all fairness, I probably learned a lot. Of, we were just like looking through stuff. Like we were yeah. unintentionally educating ourselves, like playing with a computer. Good times. I, I, I mean, like, I got- honestly, like it, like Wikipedia takes a lot from Encarta in terms of like, you can just click around and learn shit. So like, do you think you can still buy like a full, like, did you have those? We had those like when I was young. My mom had a full like encyclopedia set, like like, like a like a My world book or books, something. Like dead trees, dude. Like she... it was a big chunky shell. <laughs> well, she I mean, actually that, bought what... the updated version of the one she had as a birthday gift for my dad years ago. Um, yeah, the 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 big encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> dude, like that's gone. That's gone with like phone books too, right? Oh no, I no we uh, I I. I they dropped a phone book off in front of my door. How a big is a ago. Toronto phone book? Jeez. Well, it, it, and it's how it's many? Not, it's, it's it's all businesses. It's it's no oh, longer residential, no residential. people so, anymore. So, okay. so it's all it's all like yay big. But okay, it's all, it's all the business listings. Because I know back yeah. in the early two thousands, we had two for Atlanta. Mm. Like Vol- volume A, trying. volume B. Yeah. Uh, See, Portugal. It admittedly it was a three thousand page one, but and it, those pages were thin. Uh, ah, but yeah, again, it was let's a chunk bring back boy. scrolls. That could have been a dope ass scroll. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for all of Portugal. <laughs> hey man, if it works, mm-hmm. Jordan, we need to have a little talk um, about our hate mail that Pedro is going to tell us all about. If I want to send some hate mail to the show, maybe maybe you said something that was correct, and I want to take the uh, other side of the argument. Just, I, I want to be confidently wrong. What if I want to give my phone number to Blizzard? <laughs> <laughs> well, you you can give your phone number to us. We got we got a we got a voicemail box. Oh yeah, yeah. we do have that one, <laughs> dude. We do. I mean, hit us up on Spotify. Press the button, and apparently, it's a lot of like difficult shit after that. But press that button, get started. We get, get trapped in our ecosystem, right? We've gotten yeah, that, exactly that one first, voicemail. One, exactly that first setup voicemail. for a voicemail takes some doing, but after that, it's just a button press away. Maybe uh, if you'd like to send us some things that we'll actually read. Go to LaceGameCast.com. There's a contact button you can press. There's a form you gotta fill at the bottom of that page. There's a bunch of warnings at the top that you should read. There's no and warnings at all, man. It says, hey, check this out. If you got a question or <laughs> feedback for the show, that's neat. Pick the right show in the drop-down menu. Do it. If you want to come on a show, we'd love to have you on this show or on Wednesdays. If you get an open source project you want to put all over our face, chest, and neck, we would love to see it. If you're a crowdfunding campaign, however, make sure you got a Linux build of whatever you're trying to hawk. Or we're not going to acknowledge that it's, like, this is not going to be real. It's not going to happen on this show. And in closing, Your Honor, 
press releases. There's an email address on there. Use that email address. <laughs> okay, <All> warning right. <laughs> singular. <laughs> it is in all caps, though, at the bottom. <laughs> Reading is hard. Read. <laughs> and and no, I was, no, Pedro, no. to make you feel, I was being very stern when I typed that. <laughs> mm-hmm. so 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 <laughs> all right well uh we, we got we got one bit of hate mail this week oh, from man. uh f- they're talking about the truth about desktop linux the truth is out there man uh they say desktop starnix sucks for no skills i had cde rocking in the 90s i've had a black box setup that's better than anything microsoft or apple has ever made gnome now can be prettier and more functional with minor tweaks than anything anyone else is offering and if you were an e-fanatic, Enlightenment has been better than anything Microsoft has made for y'alls. The only thing you can really bitch about is X versus Wayland, and even there, X isn't bad. Linux is beating Windows in some games with AMD hardware now. Granted, Windows is a joke, so using the hardware better isn't some huge feat. I'm confused. <laughs> so it starts off by saying, you know, desktop Linux uh, sucks for no skills, and then Linux is great? Yes, I understand what it is. This, thank you for leaving a comment. This was left on Odyssey. So mm. you can leave a comment there. Let's do it. I understand this. You got to read through it right. No skills is a new word we have to in- inject into our vocabulary. That means, yeah, I know. The no skills are the normies. So you're yeah. being dumb on purpose. <laughs> no, it's, it sucks for no skills. And then Desktop Unix sucks for no skills for people who don't know what the fuck they're doing. Desktop Linux doesn't work for them. Windows desktop doesn't work for them either. No one have you don't seen the types of people that can use when you deal with them day in and day yes. out? <laughs> That's how I know they, it doesn't work with Windows either. <laughs> no skills, just have no skills. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. The difference is they were they they, they get handed the Windows. <laughs> yes, we uh, give them the Windows laptop and say, "Here's the service desk." And then they email says, laptop won't turn on, hit and the they, power they, button. They, they expect me... different results. And if you, if you handed no skill a Linux desktop or Linux laptop, you're like, you got the camera going? All right, good. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, you could, theori- you could theoretically do it. Like, the man pages are all there. Like, oh, it is all there. Um, you, and you, it depends on what th- flavor you, you land on. you it together. But, like, yeah. Desktop Linux, I mean, you know, that was, what the, that was the title of last week's video because... We were talking about the person who installed um, Hollow ISO. Hollow ISO, yes. Using that as a desktop. Um, where's Linux out on the desktop? But do, do you come do you come to desktop Linux in 2023 with preconceived notions? Of course you do, because you're fucking human. Don't even chat. Yeah. yeah. Put fingers that. down off the keyboard. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> what are those expectations? I am so far removed from that. Not uh, this is not a humble brag. This is not ego or anything. This is genuine, 100% curiosity. Uh, makes my life harder because I don't know where people are at and when they're coming to Linux in 2023 when I'm sitting like, I need to make a guide for these motherfuckers. What are you expecting? Uh, to go to the website, download the EXE, and run it. That's what people want to do. What Which is we, bad. Uh, everyone knows, everyone who knows oh, even oh. a little bit about okay, IT here we go, knows here that we that's go. a bad idea. <laughs> Linux, but, de- Linux desktop drivers dot com and we're gonna re- we're gonna mimic all these sites and it's just gonna link to a flat pack <laughs> or instead of a flat pack it just links it's a clever link that opens the terminal and uh, writes down the commands just push no. enter wait, wait, so, 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 yes let's let's teach so, people so, good habits on linux mm-hmm. like right so that, that, that's, that's what we need. We, we need we need a website full of exes that are actually shell scripts that when you run them give you yes. no run, we run, rename run the, the flat packs dot exe so they think yeah, they're well, downloading uh, well, drivers Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's that's what I mean, right? Uh, my, my my friend put together like a like a shortcut for uh, installing uh, Tailscale on the Steam Deck, and it's mm-hmm. literally just all done through the desktop shortcuts. It's just like yeah, ex- ex- executes a, like a terminal command, and away you go. And like yeah, that's that's perfectly acceptable. Is like just getting shit up and running. I don't know about preconceived notions about a Linux de- desktop. I think you though, expect because, like one to one because I think it would be reasonable to expect like to have a one to one parity. Or damn near as makes no difference between Mac OS and Windows as far as application availability being from the vendors yeah. themselves. You know, you, what do you get? You get your YouTube, your Spotify's, Steam. I don't, I don't know. Cause like, I, I, I wonder how much these people would struggle if you just like stuck a Mac in front of them and asked them to like do something as well, because you're going to run into like similar things. Like you don't use the same techniques on Macs to solve the problems that you do on windows there to a lesser degree. You can kind of do that on Linux, but like, bro, bro, yeah. bro, bro. I'm a windows user. All right. I can figure out Mac, man. What the fuck? I got this, bro. 
I'm, I'm going to go I, install man, two I, Linuxes. Just because you said I, that. I, I, uh, man, as, 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 as a casual Mac user, mm-hmm. the amount of shit I have to Google for like basic stuff like, you should just be able to do this, right? Yeah, Google, it's like, this is, this is actually an option in the GUI on, you know, KDE, GNOME, whatever. Why is this hidden and why do I have to use the terminal on fucking Mac OS to do something basic? Why do I need to install a third party application to change the output that a fucking like an audio speaker that a program is using, right? Like there is no Pavu control on Mac, except if you install Pulse Audio and like set up Pavu control. Yeah. (laughs) Write us. I want to read this next week. You get some thoughts and allegations for this, because especially if you're newish to Linux and by that, I mean like maybe you've only been using Linux for a decade. How how does it feel? What do you look for to desktop, and what desktop have you picked, especially for your gaming machine? Like oh, that's these are maybe this is the thing with Linux. So there's so many like it's not fragmentation. You call it fragmentation. I call it choice, and choice is important to me. So many different desktops to choose from. Do you think there's a maybe maybe a little whiff of like choice paralysis going on here? Oh, I, I, absolutely. Like a hundred percent. Like. Uh, what what distribution? What hardware? Right, like there's uh, there 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 are so many of these minor choices, and if you're if you're new to it, then like you may not even know what questions to ask. Oh I God, no, I'm yeah, like, and you think that those actually matter when most of them don't really. Well, I, can you imagine? It's like, <laughs> so let me explain to you the differences between X and Wayland. <laughs> that that's the big one. Admittedly, currently that is the big one because yeah, Pulse Audio, PipeWire kind of solved that problem <laughs> the difference between amd and uh, github html yes how, how, yeah. how to install an html file on your linux machine I might mm-hmm. want to install fonts yeah <laughs> never never have i been verbal with a video before outside like non yeah, right like, um, like, what? like like just outside of making a joke when we're hanging yeah. out in meat space double i'm like uh, <laughs> yeah right that squeaky lightus not not regular lightus Got me to sit the fucking what to that video, like right. pointing at them, like what is going on here, man? <sighs> uh, I don't know. Or uh, yeah, no. If you are a Windows user and you somehow ended up listening to this, tell us what it is yeah. that's stopping What's you missing? What's from missing? Yeah. Um, well, like, using no, Linux. Well, What's the well, thing that you ran into that said no? Nah. Or, mm. or, or better yet, if you're thinking about using Linux, what are your, some of your preconceived notions? I'm, I'm very curious because there's, there's a what lot of like. What the fuck are you doing listening to this show? I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> fucking know. You, you, you were, you were plopped in front Blink of here if by you someone need help. unwillingly. Uh, we understand Morris. Sometimes. You get, you get, you get uh, from uh, Clockwork Orange, right? You're, you're hooked up to the Luda Bigo machine. You just, uh, it's like, bitch, I wasn't. No, it's, uh, it's as long as the speed. Fuck off. Um, but yeah, like, I, like I'm, I'm curious how much of it is just like the recycled Microsoft FUD that like everyone, every fucking, I, I would use Linux, but threat. Ninety percent of my games would work under Linux. Right, like it's, it's always the same talking points that have like never been, haven't been valid for like. Well, 10 it starts with years, a but- want. Usually curiosity or like the, I think the biggest of fallacies that I see repeated is man, if windows doesn't stop doing this, I'm finally going to switch to Linux. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. We know you're not. Don't, I mean, you, yeah, I'm sure it feels good to scream. It, it feels right, good like, to get, you know, scream frustration, but like leave Linux out of this. Like you ain't going nowhere. But yeah, gentlemen. no, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what, what other kind of notions people have that aren't that. Let us know until next week. Oh, do we got do we got a plug stuff? Oh yeah, I guess we, we do. got plugs. Yeah, yes. we, we. It's a little, 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 little premature. And... Yeah, <laughs> I mean we could do it quick. Check this out, yes. ladies and gentlemen. If you want to support what we do, head over to LinuxGameCast.com, smash that support button, fam. You will find a vast cornucopia of nonsense to help us out. We appreciate each and every little bit of it. This week, we need to thank Nubbin and Gamatron for those resubs, and also want to thank PT Day for dropping five gift subs on top of that, and a new Patreon executive producer, Ian. And here's something real important. If you just found yourself a Twitch sub, and you're like, hey, what? What's going on? Link up to our Discord. That's where we're hanging out the other six days of the week, doing our party and things. We get Amazon wish list, all the other things that you would expect. And Pedro, you need to thank somebody one last minute. One I do, Arthur, and uh, he got me Slayer's X Terminal Aftermath Vengeance of the Slayer. Oh, there pick, pick a font and stick with it? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. All right, everybody. Time for those credits. Maybe. Can we do credits? Press, yeah. Press the button, Frank. 
<laughs> we, we're going for that again because I didn't have time because I didn't have power when I got home. <laughs> Milk needs more calcium. Brought to you by Raised by Wolves. Also being removed off of uh, HBO Max. Gotta thank the Ooh. lovely, lovely people flying out in space. I'm in a little tiny box right now. We gotta thank Omegas, our Theron, our advisors. We gotta thank our executive producers. We got Bob Ramp, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Drummer, Pebble, Tomas, Hakim, David, Ishep, and Ian. And we got our little Nikki fan, Super Desto, Empty, Glorious, Eggy, and Blasphemia. We got Sea Monster, Zero Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin Nubbin, Darkwing, System T, Dancing Joe, Ogi One, and Kyrilla. I just realized Jordan was little. Uh, yeah, Death so Dennis, tiny. Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, Renee, Leonardo, Christian, Kim, Christian, Jill, Benjamin. Oh, no. <laughs> Duke, Jill, that one. There you go. <laughs> Steven B, Dirty D, Zach, Game of Tron, Dodger, Zethra, Gaming, Rue, Turnover, Alphonse, Oxfine, Outlook, Hope, Jello, 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 Piper, and Aromatic Dev. <laughs> uh, all of the beautiful party people making this show possible. Uh, we appreciate it. Couldn't do it without your support. Um, thank you so much for letting us do what we do. Also, all of our fine upstanding animals on this blinking wall of nonsense. Behind me, picked up things for our studio. Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Linux New, Aldius, Noctilus, John Eshep, Gametron, you know it, DS, and Joe, Aromatic, Dev, Dev, and Kaidura. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, another Linux game has been cast. Until next I'm gonna level. cast your game. <laughs> I'm gonna game your Do Linux. it, coward. <laughs> Die to fire. I need a casting sofa first. Wait, that wait, a casting? See, Ca casting you're not couch. a wizard. I'm not following for that again. <laughs> I put on my robe and wizard hat. Five dudes.